Welcome to the Satellite Data Training Series, presented by the Aerosol Team at the NOAA NESDIS Center for Satellite Applications and Research. Today I'm going to provide an overview of NOAA's JPSS series. JPSS stands for Joint Polar Satellite System, and the Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite, or VIRS, sensor. Before viewing this video, we recommend watching the video called Introduction to Satellite Remote Sensing, which is also available from the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel. The JPSS series are NOAA's next generation polar orbiting satellites. They provide critical observations for severe weather prediction and environmental monitoring, including 85% of data used in numerical weather prediction models. Currently, there are two JPSS satellites in orbit. The SWOMI National Polar Orbiting Partnership Satellite, or SNPP, was launched in October 2011. The NOAA 20 satellite was launched in November 2017. It was known as JPSS 1 before launch. These are polar orbiting satellites located 824 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. As you can see from the animated graphic, SNPP and NOAA 20 are in the same orbit. They have a 130 equator crossing time, about 50 minutes apart. That means that their observations occur around 1.30 in the afternoon local time during the daytime and around 1.30 in the morning local time during nighttime. Because SNPP and NOAA 20 are polar orbiting satellites, they have global coverage, but relatively low temporal resolution. Each satellite makes about two observations per day at low latitudes, one during the day and one at night, but there are more observations each day near the poles because the satellite orbits overlap at high latitudes. Each satellite makes about 14 orbits per day, and it takes about 100 minutes or an hour and 40 minutes to complete one orbit. You can see in the animated graphic how the satellites orbit around the North and South Poles, observing a new area called a swath, which is the green shaded region, as the Earth rotates underneath the satellite. The Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometer Suite, or VIRS, is NOAA's next generation scanning radiometer on the JPSS satellites. VIRS measures properties of the Earth's atmosphere, ocean, and land. VIRS extends the measurement record of heritage sensors such as the Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer, or MODIS, on NASA's Terra and Aqua satellites, and the Advanced Very High Resolution Radiometer, or AVHRR, on the NOAA and METOP series of satellites. VIRS has 22 spectral bands, ranging from visible to long wave infrared, including 16 moderate resolution bands, or M bands, five imaging resolution bands, or I bands, and one day-night band. Details about the VIRS spectral bands are listed in the table. As you can see, VIRS has high spatial resolution. The M bands have 750 meter resolution at nadir, which is when the satellite is looking straight down, and the I bands have 375 meter resolution at nadir. The day-night band has 750 meter resolution across the entire scan. VIRS has a relatively wide swath, about 3,040 kilometers. That means VIRS has full global coverage in both the day and night sides of the Earth. There are no coverage gaps in the tropics. That is different from some of the heritage sensors, as we'll see in the next slide. There are a couple of notable advantages of VIRS compared to the heritage sensors, like MODIS. VIRS has higher spatial resolution for many products, including aerosol and fire products, compared to MODIS. The images here show a comparison between MODIS aerosol optical depth on the left, which has only three kilometer spatial resolution, compared to VIRS aerosol optical depth on the right, which has 750 meter resolution. You can see how the higher resolution of VIRS resolves a smoke plume near Los Angeles, California, the red, orange, yellow, and teal colors, while the corresponding MODIS image is pixelated, making it difficult to discern the smoke plume. As mentioned previously, VIRS has a relatively wide swath, 3,040 kilometers versus 2,330 kilometers for MODIS. MODIS's narrower swath means it has coverage gaps in the tropics, while VIRS has full global coverage as shown in the images here. Through a system of pixel aggregation techniques, VIRS controls pixel growth towards the swath edges, resulting in minimal degradation in spatial resolution at the swath edges away from, away from nadir. This image is another illustration of VIRS swaths. 
Veers scans a swath moving cross track as it orbits or moves along track on SNPP or NOAA 20. The dimensions of one swath scan is about 3,040 kilometers in the east-west direction and 12 kilometers in the north-south direction. Veers data are distributed as granules. One granule is equal to 48 scans, and it corresponds to around 85 seconds of data or about 570 kilometer, kilometers in the along track that is the north-south direction. The graphic shows an example of a granule over the conus to give you an idea of its dimensions. Because SNPP and NOAA 20 have global coverage, there are over 1,000 VIRS granules per day from each satellite. As explained previously, SNPP and NOAA 20 are in the same orbit. Both satellites make observations around the same local time, about 50 minutes apart, in the early afternoon during daytime and in the early morning during nighttime. That means there are at least two VIRS observations, one from SNPP and one from NOAA 20 during the day, and at least two VIRS observations at night. There are more sets of observations at high latitudes because of the overlapping satellite orbits at the poles. These multiple sets of VIRS observations allow us to track fast evolving events like wildfires. These images are an example showing the campfire in Northern California on November 8th, 2018. Compare the location and extent of the thick gray smoke plume from the fire shown in the VIRS true color imagery from NOAA 20 on the left with the same observation from VIRS on SNPP 50 minutes later on the right. You can see how the smoke plume expanded westward and drifted southward in the 50 minutes between the NOAA 20 and SNPP observations. Now that you know more about the JPSS satellites and VIRS, you may wish to explore additional titles in the STAR Aerosol Team's satellite data training series, such as a detailed overview of VIRS aerosol products, including aerosol optical depth and aerosol detection, a video showing how to download VIRS level two data files from NOAA's comprehensive large array data stewardship system or class, and video tutorials on how to navigate NOAA's aerosol watch and JSTAR mapper websites where you can find prepared imagery from VIRS on SNPP and NOAA 20. Look for these videos on the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel.